quick overview of uh, rubber dumbbell testing, um, ISO 37 and also uh, ASTM D412. Got some information on our website. For this test, I'll be using a Mog Test DVU uh, 2.5, and I'll be using a 500 newton load cell, although you could use a smaller one for lower force applications, um, together with a long travel extensometer, the MLT 700. Some eccentric self tightening roller grips rated to 1K and Vector Pro MT software. So we'll have a look at our Vector Pro setup. Just log on to it. So I've set up two tests D412 and ISO 37. They're very similar, slight changes in the, the setup. So attributes I've named my test, I've got some test notes in there. Um, I'll specify the dumbbell type that I'll be using, type C, and I've put in the test temperature. You can obviously add more attributes to identify the sample ID and things like that. Um, named it as dumbbell type C. And I'll give my dimensions of width and thickness, um, 6mm by 4mm, and a 50mm gauge length. It's worked out my area. Set my brake detector up to a 50% drop. And then we've got our extensometer, so we need to enable it and turn the analog on. And I'll do the prompt for specimen so we can re-measure it before we do each sample. Simple test, zeroing out. Uh, we're travelling at a rate of 500 mil a minute, returning home. And then we've got some results in here. I'll put the um, timestamp and the specimen details. Some of the attributes are in here. And then I've got some calculations. So I've got the tensile strength, which is on our stress strain axis. So our maximum, and then we'll be looking at a, a break and strength of break. So it's stress strain, uh, a drop of one percent. We'll look at Young's modulus. Um, we we'll turn it on, so we use by other results on the stress strain axis. This is for our offset yield. So we're looking for a one percent yield on this to find the offset yield point. And then we'll look at some stresses at specific strain values. You can see there's one here on uh, fifty percent. So we set the X to 50% and occurrence 1. Then we can repeat this process for different uh, levels of strain. So I can pick it out at 100% and I've got 200% and 300%. There are variables within the standards on testing speeds and things like that and, and specific results, but the core is there and you can modify this accordingly to your requirements. So that's the ASTM D412. And I'll save my changes. And we'll look at the ISO 37. Again, I've added the same attributes in here, specimen type, temperature, I've got a picture in there. Look at the specimen this time, dumbbell type one, um, width and thickness, but this time a 25 mil gauge length. Got our area, set up our brake detector for a 50% drop and enable our extensometer and prompt for specimens also on. The operations again, very similar. As I say, you can change your speed according to the standard. It does specify several different testing speeds. Um, we'll look at our results. So we've got our tensile strength again on the stress strain axis. Um, break, our strength of break on the stress strain with a 1% drop stress versus time. Uh, we've got a second break, this time we're looking at the elongation of break, so if we do it on the strain axis, same 1% drop. And we repeat our process with our stresses at particular levels of strain. And we just set it on the x-axis. So we've got a 100, a 200 percent strain. Um, stress at an elongation, so we're looking at a particular stress at a particular elongation of 50%. You can modify that. Um, we're looking at elongation at X stress. So we're actually looking at a stress this time and reporting what the strain is. So this time it's on the Y axis. Uh, Young's modulus again, used by other results. And then we've also got our offset yield twice. So we've got our yield stress. So we're looking for a 1% yield stress. And then also we want to know what the elongation is. So we've, this time we've got the axis set to the strain 
and at 1% so we'll report the elongation of yield. And that's the test quickly set up. You can also modify them slightly if you wish. We're using these eccentric roller grips, so I'm just going to load the sample in, so there's my uh, dumbbell. Load in the top grip, load in the bottom grip. Make sure it's nice and level and straight. And then we've got our extensometer, so we're going to do the ISO test, so I'm set at a 50mm gauge limit, so I'll remove the gauge pin and set it at 25mm. This will set the arm distance, 25mm, and I can connect the arms up onto the sample and we can see this from the front as well so you can see what uh, exactly how this works so we're just spreading the arms moving them in keeping the gauge length set with the pin and the arms together and they're both set now we can uh, start doing a test you can see the sample elongating and the uh, the arms tracking the gauge length as it moves up and we're going to pull this until it breaks there we go, sample's broken. Go back in and uh, do a test and we'll look at the graph this time. So we're set to stress strain. Press play. So there's our test temperature required, 21.1 ambient temperature. And now we can modify our width and thickness of our particular sample so we get accurate stress calculations based on the sample dimensions and the area. Carry on, and we're, uh, we're off and running with the graph. I used a uh, 500 newton load cell on this, and forces are a lot lower. You could get away with a 100 newton load cell. The test continues until it breaks, and it'll be just past the 300 percent mark for this particular sample. There we go. The sample's broken and the machine is returning back to its home position. Now let's go and have a look at that graph. There's our graph that we've produced and now look at our results. So we've got our tensile strength. Uh, we have our strength at break. It's marked it slightly just below our 1% drop. Our elongation at break. And then we've got our strains at 100%. At 200 and at 300 and our other results we've got in here we've got our stress at an elongation I think it was 50% we asked for on that one um, our Young's modulus line has been marked our yield stress 0.24 megapascals and our elongation at that point as well I've got another calculation here, the force at 100% stress. And here's a video of a, another test I did where you've got an in-screen video. You can actually see both things happening at the same time. And that concludes the presentation.